Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Hello, welcome to the Paleo Zookeeper Association. My name is Austin. When taking care of an animal in a captive setting, whether it's prehistoric or modern, one of the most important things that should be planned or figured out is what to feed the animal. Each species has its own unique sets of challenges, especially especially with the species of this video. The Triceratops, the fabled iconic three-horned face, one of the most famous dinosaurs in the world, along with Ty Tyrannosaurus rex. While the general public does know that it is a herbivore, meaning they will eat plants, there's a lot more to the story than that. And even to say it eats plants, it's not as simple as one would think. Like, what kind of plants would he need to eat? How much would he eat? And so on and so forth. There's a lot of factors that a lot of people don't even consider. Now, one of the things we should do in order to figure out what we should feed the Triceratops is to see what was it feasting on in its natural habitat. According to the fossil record, Triceratops lived on the North American continent 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous. Its fossils were found in the Hell Creek Formation, which consisted portions of the states of Montana, both the Dakotas, and Wyoming. During this time, the environment was immensely different from what it will be in modern times. During this time, the area was subtropical, warm, humid, and moist. This provided various habitats such as swampy lowlands, forested floodplains, and coastal plains. A modern comparison to this environment would be like that of the Florida Everglades. Like the majority of the Mesozoic period, the age of dinosaurs, it was a time before grass existed or was a common sight, with ferns and horsetails being more commonplace. Throughout the Mesozoic, gymnosperms a group of plants that includes conifers, cycads, and ginkgos were the dominant variety of plants in the full area. While they were definitely found in the Hill Creek Formation, they are actually outnumbered by angiosperms, flowering plants, which includes mangolias and ash trees, and even some monocot species, mostly palms, which are in, in fact related to grass. Now that we've looked at the habitat, let's look at the animal itself the Triceratops. Fossils have shown that Triceratops has grown to a length between 26 and 30 feet in length or between 8 to 9 meters. Standing at a height of to be between 7 to 10 feet tall or 2.1 to 3 meters tall. And weighing in between 5 to 10 tons fully grown, it is the largest species of Ceratopsian dinosaur described in science. Looking at its mouth, it displays a curved, parrot-like beak and dental batteries in the same placement as molars. Its beak and dental batteries, columns of teeth, most definitely indicates that Triceratops was a herbivore, and the shape of its curved beak showed that it was a browser, much like black rhinoceroses and giraffes. While we do not know exactly what Triceratops' digestive system looks like, we do know that it was most likely a hindgut fermentator, which uses microorganisms to break down plant matter in the cecum and, and colon, much like horses and elephants, rather than using a multi-chamber stomach to break down plant matter like deer and cattle. Isotopic analysis on Triceratops bones has shown that Triceratops was not limited to any particular habitat whether it was forests, swamps, or even coastal plains. This indicates that Triceratops was not too picky on what it browsed upon in its environment, so much so that analysis on coprolites, fossilized dung, on Cosmoceratops, a relative of Triceratops, shows that angiosperms were a consistent part of its diet, especially those that are very fibrous or woody. Another component of the coprolites found were invertebrate shells and a lizard bone. While Triceratops would still be a herbivore, it would occasionally develop omnivorous uh, tendencies during nutritionally demanding times of the year. 
These times of the years could be when food is scarce or the breeding season when more nutrition is needed for competing males and egg laying for females. Because of this, it will be wise to not have animals smaller than Triceratops exhibited with it. One other important detail about feeding Triceratops that needs to be considered is whether Triceratops was an ectotherm or an endotherm animal. The reason why it's so important to know whether a, a, a Triceratops is an ectothermic, cold-blooded, or endothermic, warm-blooded is to know how much it needs to eat on a daily basis. If it's ectothermic, like this uh, tortoise here, it will need to eat a, a weight between uh, 15 to 25 pounds of food in a, in a single day. Ironically, it's actually as much as a, a horse will need to eat. But if it's endothermic, like this horse here, it will need to eat, uh, eat as much as, as, much as uh, from 420 to 540 pounds of food in a single day. That's just as similar to, or more so, than an elephant. So, you can definitely see why it's one of the reasons why it's so important to know whether Triceratops is ectothermic or endothermic. But, there could also be another metabolism that has been theorized in recent years that dinosaurs might actually have. The dinosaurs might actually be mesothermic. Mesothermic is basically a metabolism that is in between being cold blooded or ectothermic and warm blooded endothermic. What it basically means is that it can raise its body temperature via metabolic means, but it doesn't have a constant body temperature. This metabolism is rare today, but some animals, such as the great white shark, naked mole rats, and the monotremes, the egg-laying mammals, have this sort of metabolism as well. Along with this theory, there is much speculation and experiments that shows that large herbivorous dinosaurs ferment their food in their guts for several days, longer than birds or large mammals would. This would be able to provide enough fermentation to be able to get efficient energy from low-quality forage could probably even break down toxins that other animals can't be able to digest. And this could even help uh, warm the animal up to a nice level. With all this information in mind, we could be able to have a good idea on what and how we should feed the Triceratops. While the common suggestions would be helpful, this is not foolproof. Since there is still so much we don't know about dinosaurs in general, and not to mention that the, both the fossil record and science throws us curveballs every year, one should take all this with a grain of salt. When feeding large herbivores, especially herbivores as big as Triceratops, the first feed stuff that comes to mind is hay. Bales of hay have been used by both agricultural and zoological facilities to feed many different species of herbivores, from cattle to deer, to rhinos and elephants. Despite what people think, not all hay are equal or made of the same species of plant. There are generally four different types of hay, grass, cereal grains, legumes, and mix. Grass hay is hay that is basically cut grass, like orchard, like with orchard grass. Cereal grain hay is made from uh, cereal grain plants, such as oat hay. Legume hay is basically grown from legumes, such as alfalfa. And mix is just basically two different types of hay mixed together. On both grass and cereal grain hay, I think these types of hay would be useless for feeding Triceratops. Remember, this species of dinosaur came from a time and place where there wasn't any grass or grass wasn't even common enough to be a significant source of food for the 5 to 10 ton animal. Also, Triceratops was a browser and not a grazer, so it might not be able to even properly digest those types of hay anyway. They might be able to get some roughage out of it, but not much else. Legumes, primarily alfalfa, might be able to be a good food source for Triceratops. Uh, this is alfalfa, alfalfa hay. See the, some stems and a 
lot of leaves. The amount of leaves in it will show just how much protein, how rich it's going to be. Alfalfa is a really good source of protein and calcium with some roughage in it. It's good. It's great for horses and cattle and it could be a good source of food for Triceratops as well. Riches in protein can help uh, young Triceratops grow grow as much as they need to be. Um, the, the amount of calcium in it would help with growing bones and even help with uh, egg development for breeding females. It's such a rich food source that actually too much of it can in fact be dangerous and not healthy for the animal. But if, if Triceratops ate too much of this, it can give it colic, uh, runny diarrhea, both of which do, are very detrimental to the animal's health.